What is up, Yub2? Today we're talking about the best hobbies to pursue while you're on a budget. Now, before we get into the video, I'd like to ask, please leave a like on this video, hit that subscribe button, it does mean the world to me, and all your support is so greatly appreciated, and it does, I just want to say thank you. I also want to say thank you all for getting me to a thousand subscribers, not in a million years that I think that was possible, it truly does inspire me, and I'm so thankful for all of y'all. Now, with that being said, let's get right into the video. So why is hobbies important and why should you even consider pursuing a hobby while you're on a budget? The Why? Well, being able to have a hobby and something that you can invest your time into and allow yourself to just be able to escape. Because in reality, life can be hard sometimes. Life is tough and things can cause stress. And having a way just to remove the stress and just escape and just be able to pursue something that makes you happy, that makes you feel fulfilled, it's so, so important. I mean, not just for your ability to be productive at work or to be productive in life, but it's also so you can feel human. And psychologically, it's vastly important just to be able to have something that helps you recenter your life. Because when life is in complete disarray or and something goes haywire, it, it could feel like you're you're trying to catch water in a basket that's just full of holes. And so being able to partake in something that you can invest your time in and something that you enjoy can really help frame your life and help you become more productive at work and in your life. So now one of the first hobbies and one of the things that I think is really worth investing your time into is reading. And reading is very self-explanatory because, well, one, there's so many things that are written from ancient to modern that is in the written word. And it's a good way to just understand a concept and to truly realize what it's offering and what the other person is trying to say. Because reading is a great insight into one, humanity, and two, how humanity works. And so being able to read is not only an escape of reality, but it also helps you learn some great new things. Now, some people really enjoy reading philosophy, so they go and read Aristotle and Socrates. So if you like reading, go do that. Or if you want to just a true escape and not have to deal with the real world stuff, go read like a true crime or a romance to where you're, you can just feel happy and healthy. And if you're really wanting to get into investments and grow your wealth, read books like The Intelligent Investor, The Psychology of Money, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. There's a lot of books that you can just go out there and just read, like The 4-Hour Workday, Think, Think and Grow Rich, and stuff like that. And also just tax, being able to read things that are about taxes and whatnot can really help you understand. And so one of the things that I really like to think about when it comes to reading and the thing that I like to say and just to really put in perspective, is, is to, reading is to know, to know is to understand, and to understand is to live. So reading is really just the basis, it is the foundation of almost all thing mankind. Although spoken word is the most ancient language, writing is right there, and it has the most in effect, because it can spread the word of one person to the eyes and the minds of millions and billions so that is why reading is so powerful. Reading does cost some money. You do have to buy books and whatnot, but they're not just resources that you just buy once and you can throw away. No, you can buy them and reread them and reread them. And that way you can gain more and more insight on the book, the author, and just fall in love with the literature of a certain genre. But at the same time, if you buy a Kindle ebook, there's a Kindle reader that I love using, and I'll link it down in the description, so go check that out. And that way it's, you get cheaper books. If you have Amazon Prime, you get cheaper books, but also Prime Reading has a bunch and bunch of books that are all available for free. So go give it a try. Now, going parallel with reading it's writing writing is so not easy because being able to explore creativity linguistically through writing is very difficult in the first couple steps you have to kind of understand what your end goal is what do you want to write about and once you get a question just use the socratic method and just go through that question and find answers and then find problems with the answers and then go and find new questions and then just use writing as an outlet to just talk about your experiences. And it's very cheap. If you have a laptop, if you have an iPhone, if you have a pen and paper, you can start writing. And you don't have to write essays and write doctorate level theses. You can just sit down and write about how you're feeling, how what's going on through the day, what's motivating you, what's demotivating you, 
What what's putting up some barriers in your mind, and what's kind of keeping you keeping your feet in the sand? And that's just a good way, just to, one for one thing, to keep yourself centered mentally, but also to allow you to see where you want to grow. So if you want certain financial goals in ten years, say I want to reach one million dollars net worth in five years. I want to reach. $10 million in net worth in 10 years, something like that. And that way you can make your writings about that. Like, what are you doing to pursue that goal? What are you doing that allows you to really find yourself and allow the writing, not just to be a way, obviously to find yourself, but also to explore yourself, find things that you truly and wholeheartedly believe in. And you think will be so powerful that just writing it down and being able to read it in the future, it's a beautiful thing. And that's why writing is so nice. That's why I like writing poetry. It's not always just about myself. It's about nature. It's about beauty. It's just about everything that surrounds me. And it just helps me keep a lightful eye to what's around me. And it helps me explore creativity in a new way. Now, another great way, kind of going alongside with observing the beauty that's around you and capturing that is photography. Now, most people think photography, they're like, oh man, you need... A $8,000 camera, you need a, a red 4K cinematic, just masterpiece of a camera. No, photography is not all about the quality of the photo. Yeah, it can be, but in reality, it's not the quality of the photo, it's the memory behind the photo. It's the story. Why did you go and f capture that picture? What What's so special about that? So, for the longest time, I just used my iPhone, and I still do. I only use my iPhone for photos. But I take photos that are resemblant of the emotion that is being drawn. Like I have a picture when I was hiking through Colorado. I have a picture of the sun shining through the 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 brush and just having this really beautiful rainbow-like effect cascading to the trail. And so I took a picture. Now, if I look at it today and standards to the, this new current iPhone I have, yeah, shooting on an iPhone 5, it wasn't the best quality. But it was a story. And it was seeing that picture, although it's slightly pixelated, that beauty and the ambiance that is produced by that picture really puts me back in that place of mental peace and mental clarity. And that's what's so great about photography is it doesn't require thousands and thousands of dollars. You can just take the cheapest, you know, those little disposable cameras and start photographing things. And pho photography isn't just about, you know, the beauty and everything. It's about capturing moments, capturing memories. And in the same way, vlogging and videography can be the same exact thing. It doesn't require a lot of money. You can just get into it and just start capturing moments. But when you capture moments, be sure to capture the story. Don't just take pictures of everything because you're going to lose the story. You're going to lose what's going on around you. And photography is a great way just to keep yourself mentally present in your life, but also allow for you to reminisce. And that's a great thing. Now, you may ask, what does reading and writing and photography have to do anything with finance well it's because being able to stay mentally clear and reminiscent and not dwelling on the past and the bad times but seeing the past as something that's beautiful and that has gotten you here no matter what you went through it's a great way just to set your perspective and having a good perspective and not giving up on yourself and realizing that whatever happens it's gonna happen for a reason and you're gonna grow no matter what you may have to go through fire and you may have to walk through coals, but at the same time, on the other end, you're going to see the beautiful waterfall. And that can apply to your financial life because you know that what you may have to take a risk in your finances, but at the same time, you know at the end, taking this risk may pay off. And if it doesn't pay off, you'll lose maybe just a little bit. So it helps you understand that so many other people have taken this risk. And so I can go and take that risk as well. And reading will allow you to see how people take that risk and how they do it and how they pursue risk. Writing will allow you to to see how you how you perceive risk and how you're willing to perceive. But photography is a great way just to take yourself and remove it from risk and only place yourself in beauty and capture the emotional place that you're at mentally. And so that's why that can be so beneficial is because it helps you with your perspective. But another great hobby for someone to pursue is gardening. And why is gardening really amazing for a budget is because, well, if you just focus on seeds, it doesn't require much money to partake in gardening. And you can allow for this beautiful creation and the satisfaction of being able to watch a plant grow and knowing that you nourish that plant 
that you planted the seeds, that you watered the foundation, and you allow it to grow. Now, in many aspects, gardening and financial literacy and being able to be financially independent and growing your wealth is very much the same. There's so many parallels between gardening and financial growth. In financial growth, you plant the seed of opening up a Roth IRA. You water it with a consistent payment of $6,000 a year. And in 5, 10, 40 years, when it comes to retirement, you'll be worth $5 million. And just like gardening, being able to plant that seed, water, and watch the growth has, one, a really relaxing and therapeutic way of allowing yourself to be separated from the stress of life. But it allows you to just think, because it, it isn't completely mindless. You're still having to be productive in gardening, but at the same time, you're being able to be think about life. You're able to reflect. You're able to, okay, so I read this news article today about how Netlist is winning a lawsuit. Okay, so maybe a Netlist would be a good investment while you're watering the plant and taking care of it. So you're not only nourishing the plant and you're watching it grow, which is really satisfying. It Not only does it help you just really change your perspective of life, it helps with the release of serotonin. Watching this plant grow and seeing some satisfactory Results coming from what you are putting in the work with. So gardening has very much the same effect as investing. When you're investing, when you're seeing that growth, you're having that serotonin hit. But gardening allows you to think and really philosophize, but also just to be present. To be present within the then and now and reflecting on the past. And also looking to the future. So it's a beautiful thing. It's really just a mindscape. Gardening is... May, beautifying the landscape around you but while you're gardening you're really although you're making the landscape around you beautiful you're also beautifying your mindscape so that's why gardening is such a great hobby is one it's pretty cheap to do two it's a great way to get yourself mentally centered and three it has a lot of parallels to investing so if you're not so confident with investing and you want to just test it out, invest your time into gardening. And you may not have a green thumb, you may have a black thumb, but watching how time can allow a seedling to germinate and to then produce a beautiful flower can show you how investing can work. If you put your time in and you do your research and you keep yourself honest and accountable and you stay current with what's going on with the plant. Or in the stock market. Now, another great hobby that is great for financial health is cooking. I mean, cooking is the best hobby to pursue financial health with. Why? Because it saves so much money from eating out. So many people eat so much and spend such exorbitant amounts eating out that just, just, ah, it drives you crazy. But cooking, just cooking daily and enjoying cooking and turning it into a hobby to where you're enjoying the, what you're making and you're seeing the creation of this beautiful, tasty treat um, and meal that you're creating it has the same serotonin effect as in rowing and watching your investments flourish. So in some ways, it does have the same parallels to investments. But at the same time, you're investing your money more wisely because you're spending less on what you're cooking and you're not paying for someone else's time to prepare it but you're preparing it and you have full control over everything that's going into the food that you're producing. So you can enjoy it. You can enjoy sitting down at the dinner table and knowing that you made this meal, knowing that the full serotonin is going to hit you in full effect because you made it from scratch and you finished it. And now you're sitting at the table enjoying it. And with if you have a family, especially cooking is a great hobby because it's all about perfecting. And it's all about taking the next steps to grow your abilities at cooking. And it saves your family a lot of money. Instead of spending $400 on eating out a month, you can cut down your grow or your, your spending on eating down to $50 just by buying the same amount of food. So cooking is a great way to, you know, first off, budget. It helps with the budget. And also it allows for you to explore a creative outlet and have that serotonin effect of having great endorphins release by watching this beautiful finished product come out of the oven and you sit there and enjoying it with yourself and possibly friends and being able to be proud of what you created. So that's why cooking is a great hobby. So I really recommend it. Now, going alongside that is baking. I mean, who doesn't like a tasty treat? I mean, being able to 
put in and take a box that costs two dollars add some water and add an egg and throw in the oven and comes out nice rich beautiful brownies now yes that's a cheaper way to get into baking but it, it can put that spur under your boot that helps you come to love baking and see what's really good about it or spending a hundred dollars at any grocery store near you on cookies and whatnot and processed food you can have full control over it you can know what's going into the brownie and whatnot so you could buy the cheap box brownies and get three times as many brownies as you would just in the little plastic bins but then at the same time if you want to make the brownies from scratch it will cost you a fraction of the cost instead of spending two dollars on the box plus the egg plus the water whatever you're you're buying all the ingredients at a time so you can curate and you can perfect the brownie and how you like to test it. So like, for example, I really enjoy baking and I wanted to try out and just, I like a cakey brownie. What did I do? Well, me and my friend, we're sitting there and we're like, hmm, how do we make something more cakey? And I was like, let's put eggnog in it. Like, who would put eggnog in a brownie? I don't know, but I already just thought it was a good idea. And it turned out to be the most moist and beautiful brownie that I've ever had. It was cakey. It was flavorful, it was sweet, but also a little bit of that saltiness that came through. It was great. And that's what's the beauty of being able to control every ingredient that's going into something and seeing the product come out. So just like cooking, baking is a great way just to further budget, but also a, a great way just to ex experience endorphins and experience the mental clarity. Because while you're cooking, yes, you're adding ingredients here, you're adding this ingredient there. And you're mixing. But the whole time, it's pretty mindless. If you have a recipe, it's very mindless. So you can be thinking about other things. You can be singing music. You could be listening to your favorite podcast. You could be, be used, listening to an audiobook. So you can be doing other hobbies that will help pour into your life and help bring you to satisfaction. And also allow for you to gra grow greater insight in, one, yourself, and two, in what's going on around you. And knowing what's going on around you is really important. Because it helps you with your financial gain through the stock market and index funds and mutual funds. I know that was a really long and out, drawn out video. But these are all hobbies that I've really thoroughly enjoyed. And I found it very budget friendly. These are hobbies that I didn't pick up because I was like, oh, let's go right. It was like, okay, I don't have that much money. But I want to explore a creative outlet of telling a story. So I started writing. And I started writing because I was reading, and I was reading uh, to learn more about ancient cultures, finance, and whatnot. So because of reading, I was led to writing, and because I really enjoyed the storytelling of writing, I found photography. And the reason why I found photography is I love the story of photos. I love being able to show a photo of a castle in Scotland that I took and be like, yeah, this is the castle that was shot in James Bond, but right here was where a seagull and I... I don't, I'm now talking on my butt. A seagull flew and grabbed a french fry out of my hand or whatever. But telling that story to where it could be comedic or it could be just a really sincere and beautiful story. Now, gardening is a great hobby that I've picked up now and I'm really enjoying because one, it's super cheap. I literally just go to my dad's house and I just progate all of his plants. I just cut off the leaves and I, I put them in some water and let it hydroponically grow and then put it in soil. <laughs> It's very cheap for me because I'm not putting any money into it. I'm literally just covering the fraction of a penny that I'm paying in water. I'm buying planters and, you know, planter food so, like, plants can be nourished and all that. But that's really cheap. I bought eight po uh, eight planters for, like, 12 bucks on Amazon, and I bought the whole thing of plant food for, I think it was two, but it lasts for, like, a year and a half. So it's, it's really cheap, but gardening is a great way to help grow with cooking because you're now growing the herbs and spices that you're putting into your cooking. And what you're cooking is a great way to lead to baking because obviously if you make a great meal, you want a great dessert. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like on the video. Hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. And with that being said, this is Monty Sausage. Peace and out.